What is up, Mets fans? Welcome back to another episode of the True Mets Talk podcast with your boy CP. Happy December 4th. Happy Monday. And first and foremost, happy start to the winter meetings. Yes, the winter meetings do start today. And we already have initial rumblings coming out of the New York Mets world in terms of some potential talks that they have with a certain free agent outfielder. Before we get into that, make sure you hit that thumbs up, comment your thoughts and opinions. I want to hear what you all have to think about a potential signing of a player that we're going to be talking about in this video. It's going to be a very short video, just going over some of the, the rumblings that we're hearing so far. Subscribe to the channel. It's going to be a very busy week with the MLB winter meeting starting up. A lot of Mets content coming your way this week, whether it be pre-recorded episodes like this one or live streams. The MLB Hot Stove Mets Roundtable podcast is going live tonight on the channel. Myself and other Mets content creators are talking all things MLB winter meetings as it pertains to the Mets, so don't miss that. And the Interstate Mets report will be going live this week as well. You know where to find me, all your latest podcast updates on my social media. All my handles are SCPNY Sports, whether it's YouTube, X, or Instagram. You know where to find me. Okay, let's get into it. I woke up today and I saw some... Tweets being posted uh, from the Mets beat reporters saying that they have begun initial talks with free agent outfielder Michael A. Taylor. Obviously, Michael A. Taylor is a 10-year vet in the MLB, a career 239 hitter, and you see his 2023 stats with the bat on your screen right there. Now, what I will say first and foremost be before we talk about um, his performance with the bat last year. I will say that he started 110 games in center field for the Minnesota Twins last season and has very high upside with his glove. And he's always had high upside with his glove. A long time Washington National before, I got to see a lot of Michael A. Taylor, and he covers a lot of ground in that outfield, and he has a really strong arm. And um, for his career, he is pretty good in the defensive run save category. So that is what you will get from Michael A. Taylor with the glove. He can play any position, not only center field, but the corner outfield spots as well, which is important when you assess the situation with Starling Marte and whether you're confident in him or not if you're the New York Mets. Obviously, Marte having a down 2023, a lot of injuries to go along with that. It's remaining to be seen what you get out of um, a guy like Starling Marte. So it seems to be a common trend that the Mets are going after uh, free agent outfielders. Um, obviously, this this Mets core outside of Nimmo and Starling Marte remains to be seen how it's going to shake out. I was under the presumption that DJ Stewart was going to be locked into that fourth outfielder type season or type role this upcoming 2024 season. Um, he had a tremendous showing down the stretch in 2023. Uh, he got retained this offseason by the Mets, DJ Stewart, that is. Obviously, Michael A. Taylor is a lot better of an option on the defensive side of the ball. Not saying DJ Stewart can't hold his own in the outfield. We saw that he definitely can. But I do like DJ Stewart's bat a little bit more than Michael A. Taylor's. Now, like I said, DJ Stewart still has to compete for his spot in spring training, and that remains to be seen how that performance is going to go. I think that's pretty much the common theme for a lot of this Mets roster that we're seeing get brought in here in the early goings, especially those relief type pitchers that we've been talking about. But um, a guy like Young Hu Lee is also on the market as well. There's been reports that the Mets have a lot of interest in Young Hu Lee. If you missed that video, I talked about Young Hu Lee, who he is, his stats in the KBO, and his potential fit for the New York Mets, as well as what type of ball player Young Hu Lee is. I'll drop, drop the link um, in the description if you want to go back and look at that video if you have not already on my channel. But like I said, 220 average for Michael A. Taylor. The on-base percentage wasn't great. Uh, the OPS was below 800 last season. He did notch in 20-plus home runs, um, which is a rarity for Michael A. Taylor. And he's the type of guy that is not going to regularly get you 20-plus home runs, but when he does, it has a direct correlation with that average dropping because usually Michael A. Taylor notches around 240, 250 batting average. But when he does hit for higher power, the strikeout percentage goes up. And it was around 33.5% for Michael A. Taylor last season, as well as the average dipping naturally um, in relation to the strikeouts, in relation to those, to those home runs being hit, the average is going to naturally dip. Has a lot of speed, especially in that outfield, has the potential to swipe some bags, which is always a plus for the New York Mets, who have really 
made it seem like in the 2023 season with the new rule changes, they're going to prioritize speed on the base paths as well. So that is where Michael A. Taylor can fit in perfectly for this Mets team. I just don't know if the Mets should be prioritizing Michael A. Taylor this offseason. I'm going to be honest with you with the other priorities that the Mets need on both sides of the ball, primarily being the DH spot. Um, the D, the need for DH and the need for power in this Mets lineup for protection, uh, as protection for Pete Alonso, potentially a guy like Reese Hoskins, Jorge Soler, Teoscar Hernandez. I also dropped some DH candidates, a DH video on my channel. Go check that out. I don't know if Michael A. Taylor should be prioritized. Like I said, I firmly believe that he can compete for that fourth, maybe even fifth outfielder type role if the Mets are deciding to carry five outfielders this season, which I don't think they will, but um, that remains to be seen. But a signing of Michael A. Taylor, maybe on a cheap one-year deal, would provide some direct competition to DJ Stewart um, for the services of that fourth outfielder role. So, you know, given what we know, Michael A. Taylor is a 239 hitter. Like I said, the average dip, he plays a lot of good defense. I understand that. Um, what do you all think, though? Because honestly, like I said, I would prefer the Mets go after maybe the route where you go after young Huli, find a potential trade market, maybe for a starting pitcher, maybe for a reliever for Jeff McNeil. Obviously, young Huli and Jeff McNeil are one and the same player with the type of bats. Um, so, like I said, I, I'd much rather the Mets go that route in terms of exploring a young Huli market, finding that trade value for McNeil and then signing that DH, that power bat that hits 240, 250, that'll get you 30 plus home runs. Um, but if the Mets see fit and if they see like they need more outfield depth, Michael A. Taylor also could be a viable option for the New York Mets in that category. So like I said, a very short video. I just wanted to pose the question to you all and get the news out there that the Mets are talking initially to Michael A. Taylor at the start of these MLB winter meetings here on Monday, December 4th. Let me know in the comments what you all think about a potential Michael A. Taylor signing. Would you be happy to see him come in and compete for that fourth outfielder um, role with the New York Mets going into the 2024 season, direct competition with DJ Stewart for that role? Or are you comfortable in DJ Stewart's ability and what we saw in the short sample size in 2023? What do you all think? Hit the comments down below. I definitely want to hear what, what you all as the viewers have to think about this potential signing for the New York Mets. Like I said, nothing set in stone, nothing concrete, just talks for now and we'll see how it progresses. Hit that thumbs up, comment your thoughts and opinions, um, and hit that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber already and you happen to stumble in on this video, bottom right hand corner as you're watching this video, hover over my icon and subscribe to the channel. A lot more Mets content where that came from. Also, follow me on all my social media handles at CPNY Sports on X slash Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Instagram, and obviously here on YouTube, also at CPNY Sports. Like I said, a lot of Mets content coming out of this channel, along with my fellow Mets content creators. Like I said, whether it's a pre recorded episode just like this, where I'm doing it solo, or whether I'm going to be going on a live stream like I am tonight on the MLB Hot Stove Mets Roundtable podcast with my fellow Mets content creators. It's some content and news and analysis and opinions that you don't want to miss as Mets fans. Stay informed, stay in the know, and we'll see you all in the next video. See you all later. Let's go Mets. Thank you for watching the latest episode of the CP New York Sports Pod. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that thumbs up, comment your thoughts and opinions, and use the lower right-hand button of this video to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.